Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Ajimo. Good evening, Amoli Dada. Good evening, Salim. Good evening, Okeyinka Adikunle. Uh, how are we all doing today? Uh, fine, thank you. And you? Ah, uh, fine, thank you. I'm a bit down, but I'm fine, thank you. Um, I believe our day went well. Oh, uh, I believe our day is going well because the day is still going actually. Um, and officially, I am welcoming everybody to the last class for this batch. Ha! Ah, it has been a journey. It has been an amazing journey. It has been an interesting one. It's so good to be doing this with you guys. I feel so. Um, I feel like this is an opportunity and this is a privilege I didn't take for granted. I'm glad I had you all, right? I'm glad. Um... So how has the class been so far? I've been in the last class. Let's share our testimonies. I think that's basically what we'll do today. Though we have a course to cover today on leadership and team management. But um, I think, can everybody hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Sorry, my voice is down. I'm a bit weak, kind of. So, um, so sorry. I'm uh, sorry about that. No, nah, it's fine. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a course. We have a topic today on leadership and team management. But yeah, before we go into that, I'd like to hear everybody's testimonial. How, how have, how has it been so far? Been the last class. What would you like to say? How would you like us to do better and what would you like to add? Just let's prefer to have a conversation, basically. Let's talk. Let's talk to ourselves. Let's have conversations. Mr. Jimo, Mr. Dekunle, Mr. Lekon, Salim. Let's talk. Has the journey been been the last class? What have you learned? What have you learned? What have you unlearned? What do you think we can do better for the next batch? What do you have to say? Basically, let's just have a conversation. In the next 5, 10, 15 minutes, I want us to just interact and let's have Hello, can I... I can hear you, Mr. Jimo. I can hear you, sir. Are you there, Mr. Jimo? Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, from my own end here, the right. class has been an amazing one since the inception. Mm. And I really want to appreciate the organizers for this golden opportunity. They have actually affiliated us, uh, not asking us to pay a single penny, but they have actually put together these resources and to showing interest in our in our sources. So I feel so very excited, and I'm so very much grateful uh, for the opportunity afforded me to be part of this. Uh, class. It has been an awesome journey. I have learned quite a lot and I've actually uh, learned a lot of things as well. And I'm trusting God to help me implement what I've actually uh, been able to gather from this uh, training and looking forward to better partnership with the organizers in the nearest future. So thank you so very much. Ah, thank you very much, Mr. Likon. That was so good to hear. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jimo, we look, can, yes, uh, we can hear you now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, oh, can okay. hear you. The, the, the training has been uh, an, an eyes opener for me. In fact, uh, I've gained a lot from it. I don't know how I can express my the appreciation to the management of NSAC. 
In fact, uh, they really gone beyond what my expectation. They, they did very well, especially on the uh, clever half. And uh, because like I, I divided the training into into three. Number one is marketing. Number two is the production, and the number three is the accounting aspect. I think uh, in those three areas, they have really done very very well. They have really, although they have uh, to me, they have some area which uh, they need to improve on. On the clever, let me let me comment on the clever half. The clever half has to be upgraded very well because uh, the way I see it. Yeah, he has to he has to compete with other applications. He has to compete with other applications, and if you look at the other applications, they have a a, a good uh, features like a campable and uh, uh, other things that will be very very small. I'm not I'm not saying that the clever app is not uh, they they have done very well, but they still need to improve on it. So they need to improve on it. So on the marketing aspect, too, I, I, I have given up before before the training. I used to do home delivery, so which is uh, adding to my cost, home delivering to my customer. So I will call them and uh, ask them, do we need this? Uh, how many how many crates of egg do you have? So I will just go and deliver it to them. But with this training, I can see that uh, I have learned the additional skill that I can use to had to what I, I, I was using before. On the area of uh, production, which is uh, uh, the main area, the core area. So we have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. And uh, now I can reduce uh, the cost of production and still retain the, the, my, the quality. So I've really le le learned a lot, although I still need to improve, especially on the climate, uh, uh, smart climate area. I'm not that good in that area. Mm. If I look, if, if going to what the uh, the other lecturer have said. So I, I to me, in, in conclusion, I would say the Benzac management are really, really done very, very well. So uh, they have done very, very well beyond my expectation. And uh, they make something surprise to other people. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I, I was aware of it before. They learn something. That uh, despite the training and everything, they see a lot of people to apply for the application, which is part of their thing. I, I, I give kudos to them on that. So to me, they, they, although they, you know, there are some areas that uh, I can't mention right now that uh, need a, a improvement on it, but uh, if you look at to me, if out of 100, I'll still give them something like uh, 95 out of 100. So they are really done very well. Very well. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Hello. Kambi. Yeah, can, I, can, I can hear you. I'm with you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, okay. I think 95 out of 100 is, is, is a pass mark. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the um, feedback. Thank you for the comments. Thank you um for work on the areas that need to be worked on, and we can always get better. I think that's the most important thing. Yes, yes, better. yes. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you for being in this class. It's a pleasure having you. Um, Mr. Additional Lukman, Mr. David, Mr. Okeinka, Mr. Salim. As hear you, we're talking about um, what have you learned? Because today is our last day of training. What have you learned? What have you unlearned? What have you relearned? Um, what are you taking home with you? And what do you think we can do better? So please let's unmute our mic. Let's have a chit chat. Let's have a conversation, please. Ah, uh, can you? I don't know if anyone can hear me. So um I don't know probably why we're waiting for anyone that wants to talk um so uh I I mentioned in the start of the training that there will be a certificate for this training right so these certificates are being prepared now and um I will be sending a link to the Telegram channel after today's class I'm sending a link I want everyone to view the link and then. Our certificate will be sent um next week. Yeah, to be sent next week. So it will come in form of a link. 
you can click the link and look for your own name and download your certificate. That's basically how we do it. I think that's quite okay, right? Can anybody yes, okay. Okay. Yes, okay. okay. yes, so um after today's class, a link will be sent. We just just like in two, three minutes, we'll finish filling the link and um we can send. So I think uh, <clears throat> since nobody is talking again, uh, I think we can just go through our last topic, which is the leadership and team management skill. So basically, we this topic is more like um just to how will I say it now, just to like play with our minds, just to refresh our brain, because um most of us here are farm owners some of some of us are managers advisors and the likes and um you know we need to know how to basically manage um be a good leader you know it is it is one thing to be a boss it is another thing to be a leader right so that is basically what we want to check today. So I'll be sharing my screen now in a few minutes. I'm trying trying to set that up. So while, while I'm preparing, while I'm preparing to share my screen, um, for those that are still on mute, if you still want to talk, want us to have a chit chat, I am here. You cannot mute your mic and please talk. So I'm. Um, sharing my screen right now. Mm. All right. Uh, please let me know when you can see the screen. The screen is up. All right, awesome. Awesome. Yes, so um, like I said, we are looking at leadership and team management. So how do we lead our um staffs in the office, even if it is just one staff we have? How do we lead? The way we lead our staffs is what will make them to actually decide if they want to do well at what they do for us or not. So we won't be wasting much of time here. Um, we won't be wasting much of time in this training. It's just to, it's basically like going to be like um a cheat chat, right? It's going to be an interactive class today. To not be just one man presentation. So please let everybody be ready to talk, right? Yeah, that being said, let's check what. Um, so leadership uh, and team management skills are essential for running a successful poultry. As a poultry farm owner or manager, you're responsible for guiding your team, ensuring efficient operations and fostering a positive work environment. By embracing these leadership principles, poultry farm managers can effectively lead their team, optimize farm operations and achieve the farm goals and objectives. Strong leadership foster a positive work environment and employee engagement and ultimately contribute to the overall success and profitability of the farm. So basically what this is saying in summary is that as a farm owner, as a farm manager, if the poultry farm or whatever other business we are doing, if that business is going to move forward, right? It depends on who is leading. Now, every business has a goal. Every business has an objective. Every farm have a goal. Um, a farmer that starts his birds with 100 farms today most likely have a goal that in the next five years or in the next six, six years, my 100 birds should have become maybe 10,000 or 50,000, right? Now, each day as, they, as the day pass, the farmer walks towards that's good. Now, if you are going to achieve any goal you have set, 
it is going to depend on who you are working with. Um, there's a word that says, show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are. In this in this um instance now, it is wh whoever your worker shows if you are going to achieve your goal, if you are going to eat your goal or not. And now, how can your how can your team affect how you operate? Is by true leadership. If there is a true leadership, the team would um take to corrections easily. They will have no problem with doing what the boss says. They will have no problem with um aligning into the same goal that the business has or that the farm has because they feel very comfortable. They feel they are not the the boss is not doing do what I say, don't do what I do. Right. So as a as a farm owner, as a manager, as a supervisor, whatever um team we are leading, regardless of how big or how small the position is. We have to lead by example. We have to lead. Um, we have to be a principled leader. Yeah, I think let's proceed with that. Now, the key leadership and management skills to cultivate. One is vision and goal setting. Right. Um, like I said, every leader, as a farm owner, you should have a vision. Develop a clear vision for the farm future. So you already know that, okay, everybody that works for you, everybody that works with you, they are working towards a particular goal. They are working towards how this one plot of land poultry farm is going to become one acre of land poultry farm, where 100 birds is going to become 10,000 birds. That is the vision, you know. So you have to, as a as a as a owner of a farm or an owner of a business, you have to set a goal. You have to um have a vision that this is what I want to achieve in the next 10 years or in the next five years. And communicate these goals with your team, right? You have the goal already. Communicate with your team and let them know, okay, guys, this is what we are trying to achieve in so 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 years this is what we are trying to achieve in the next quarter so that they can also work together with your goals so that they can align to what you are seeing and what you have set for yourself and it will make the work easy because they are working towards something they are not just working for nothing they are working to achieve a particular course right and another key um key skill is effective communication so communication is actually key very, very key um, in life, in, in your job, in your farm, at, in everything, in relationships, in everything basically, like generally, communication is key. Now you, can, you have to establish um, open and transparent communication with your team. Clearly convey expectations. Let them know that, okay, this is what I want you to do today. Um, you, you, you can delegate jobs. You, I want you to feed, this particular pen today, you I want you to pick the eggs and make sure it gets to the market. You, I want you to let there be communications. Let there be communication, effective communications, right? Effective communications. You know, there's a difference between you go there and Shola go and pick those eggs. They are two different things. Do we all agree with that? Please, if you can hear me, you can unmute and Let's talk. Do you all agree with that? Yes, very well. Right. There's a different, you know, when 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 we're growing up, when we're growing up, right? Um yes, Mark, we can hear you. All right, thank you very much. When we're growing up, there is a way. Um, if our parents want to send us a message, they'll say, like, who is there? Like, I'm all alone, I'm there. and nobody will answer because the communication is not clear enough. All right. But when they say, Titi, come here, you know that okay, they I am the one my dad is calling. I am the one my mom is calling. Then he can go. But if they say, who is in that place? Nobody <laughs> might want to answer because the communication is actually not effective. So in, in your organization, in your farm, in every other business you have, let there be an effective communication between you and your staffs, between you and the team you are adding. Between, let there be an, a transparent communication. When you say, 
do this. Let it be that. When you say, um, we get the, we, you have to get your report done by Friday. Make sure they submit that report by Friday. This is not about being strict, but it's about doing what is right and getting what is right done. Yeah. Next is, um, and also encourage feedback and actively listen to the team members' input. So I really like feedback a lot. That is why before we start any class, I'll make sure I ask, okay, uh, what have you been learning? What have you? So that when somebody say, uh, I, do, I did not learn this thing or I don't know this thing, we can know what to do if it is to probably have, after the whole course, maybe um, have a tutorial later or we we'll just come up with what we can do to make sure that this person is not missing out on this thing, right? So encourage feedback, like always get the feedback from your staff. Maybe uh, you can just call them um on a random day and let them know, okay, what is, what do you think we can do better? You know, there are some ideas you have. There are some ideas your team members will have that even you don't have. There are some ideas that your staff you have that even you don't have, right? So always call for feedbacks. Let them tell you what they feel. Let them, you know, just let there be like a clear communication between you and your staff. Not a situation where as much as there should be um, a discipline, then don't let, as much as there should be a discipline, but don't let your farm be a place where you are coming and your staffs are shaking. It shouldn't be that way. Life is not that hard. Right. So third is um, long-term planning. So there should always be a long-term planning, right? You should, don't plan for today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Don't plan for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You can plan for, okay, we want to achieve this thing in this this week. This week, we want to clean the bed, clean the bed, the poultry farm. We want to drive away the debt. We um, want to do this, we want to do that this week. Let there be a long-term plan, right? Say, okay, in the next one year, this is what we are trying to do. Plan it out. Plan how you want to do it. Plan where and when you want to do it. Plan when you want to do, like, okay, in the next one year, this is what we are trying to achieve. This is how we want to achieve it. This are the days we want to achieve these particular things. And this is why we want to do it. Let there be a long-term plan. It actually helps in, it actually helps in um, your farm or your business or every other thing you want to do, right? And then um, last on this slide is lead by example. I said earlier, I mentioned earlier that do don't be a boss that says that that acts in a way that do what I say, not do what I do. Be accountable, lead by example. Let your let your team members or staffs be able to say, okay, or God did this thing and it worked. Let me also do it and it should work. Right. So when you tell them, be honest. As a boss, you have to show that honesty. When you tell them, be accountable. Your staff actually have to be accountable. But you as a boss, you have to also be accountable. All right. When you say, okay, we are going to inspect this farm today. As a boss, be the first to arrive so that they can say, oh, whatever makes Oga to be there, I have to be there. Whatever makes Oga do this thing, I have to be doing this thing. So always lead by example. A leader leads by example. Don't be a boss like boss, like that bossy person. Be a leader. Now demonstrate the values and work ethics you expect from your team. Be a role model and actively participate in every farm activity when needed. You know, when your when your um team member, your staff sees that yeah, you sanitize, you come to farm in the morning, you already sanitize your hands, sanitize your everything you need to do, and you're already in the pen. They would be ginger to say, ah, Oh, okay, guys, yeah, let's do this thing, right? So um, what you want your staff to do, let them know that, see, I can do this thing also. So always lead by example. Next is empowerment and delegation. Empowerment and delegation. So empower your team members by delegating responsibilities and providing them with the authority 
to make decisions within their roles. Trust their capability and support them as needed. So, one of the ways to empower your team members, one of the ways to empower your staff, is actually what I am doing now. Now, Betsak um, thought it is right, and they told me, okay, you go and do this. And it has been amazing since they started this training. Right? So, always um, empower your, um, you will know the strength of your staff when you give them tasks to do. If you don't give them tasks to do, you would not even know what their strengths is and what their weaknesses. You would just think uh, this guy can only pick eggs or this guy can only feed birds. But he has a lot of things in stock. He has a lot of things he can do, but because you are not giving he, he or she that opportunity, you're not giving them that empowerment, they will just be in their shell and just say, well, you know what? In this farm, all I have to do is just to pick egg. And they'll come in the morning, pick egg and go to the house. And that is all they can do. But they have more, but you are not bringing out that more. So always empower your staffs, give them tasks. Now, not, not a task that, something you know that they can do. Something you believe that, I know you can do this thing. I believe in you. And always support your team members. When your staff sees that, uh, or God, they support me, or God, any, um, or God is behind me, they will be confident to do whatever you ask them to do. Right? Always support your um team member and trust them, trust that they can do it. Just believe that, I know Shala can do this thing. Right? Yeah. Then um decision-making and problem-solving. Make informed and timely decisions for the farm. Encourage a problem-solving culture among your team, seeking their input when addressing challenges. So um, I, I mentioned earlier that there are some ideas you would have, there are some ideas you need that your team member does ask. You know, you are thinking of something and one of your staff can just say, ah, okay, we can do this and this to make this. We can do this and this to achieve this. Don't throw your don't throw that decision away and say you go and sit down. You don't know anything. No, that guy knows something. That lady knows something. Let your staffs be. Let the best idea win. Basically, mm -hmm. let the best idea win. It does not have to be your idea that wins every time. It does not have to be your decision that wins every time. Let them decide. To let them give an idea. And then you look at it, and as the leader, as the boss, you can say, okay, we can work with this, we can work with that. No, this is not good, that is not good, we cannot work with this. But let your, um, your, your team members, I like to call staff team members, because basically everyone is a team. You are working as a team to achieve a particular goal for the organization. So let your team member, right? Let them be free to share ideas. Let them be free to to make decisions also. Now, they are not making decisions for you, but they are bringing it to you that side. This is what I think. And then you can decide that, okay, we can work with it or not. So, team management and team management and motivation so you can always mo always motivate your staff or your team member. so team management and motivation always motivate your team members you know always motiv so um motivation does not have to be giving them money motivation does not have to be buying them things although you can do that once in a while when you are when you um like um have the opportunity to do that. But you see that little, um, I know you can do it. I believe in you. That little, your idea can work. You see, those little words can motivate them to do better and motivate them to do more than they can do. Just that little word of, I know you're capable more than this. Please do it. That can motivate them. That can boost their morale to go beyond what they can, to go beyond, um, a power to do whatever they want to do, right? So always foster a positive and cohesive team environment. Recognize and celebrate achievements. Provide constructive feedback and motivate your team members to excel. So it is um it is someone that is motivated that will be ginger to do more. Someone that is not motivated will just say, "Well, let me just come and go." Now make your make your team members comfortable that they just they, they don't just want to come to the office and just go. They don't just want to come to the farm and just go. 
or they want to walk, they want to feed the bed with. See, when your team members are motivated, eh, your bed will not really die that much. You will not really record motiv- uh, mortality because the people that are working, the people that are feeding this bed, they are happy. They are ginger to do the work. So it is going to be very, very stressful for them. They will just, even the chickens, <laughs> even the chickens will know they are motivated because the chickens will be happy too, right? They'll be eating well. But if they are just doing it for nothing, you know, that doesn't sound right. So um, always build your team well and motivate them, basically. Now, next is continuous learning. So what you are doing, what we are doing in this training is actually one of the leadership skills, right? Because you are keeping yourself up to date. You are keeping yourself up to date. Now, for everyone that has a farm here, I, and you probably have a staff, you can now tell your staff, okay, this is how we can cut costs. This is how we can go digital. This is how we can um, use climate smart to, um, farm management on our farm. This is how we can do this. You can sit them down and have like a one hour lecture or a 30 minute lecture on what you have learned here. So you've kept yourself up to date. As a leader, you have to continue learning. Learning actually never stop. Learning never stop. Read blogs on poetry, read news, read books, watch videos, take courses, free or paid. Just keep yourself up to date as a leader because it's not just for now. It's for two to three years now, it's for five, 10 years, it's for 20 years, it's for 50 years from now. Keep yourself updated. You just have to do that. You don't have any other choice. You just have to keep yourself updated as a leader. Yeah. Accountability. You have to hold yourself and your team member accountable for their actions and responsibility. So when you say, be at work by eight, as a boss, you have to be accountable to that word and be there by it. When you say we are going to get this thing, be account. You have to be held accountable. So you have to be very, very accountable with everything you do. Hold yourself accountable. Take responsibilities. Take ownership of success and failures. So when when a bird die, don't say ah, it's you people's fault. Take responsibility. Take ownership. And when you have excess egg um, production. Celebrate it. Take ownership of the success. Take ownership of the failures. Be accountable. Be able to let be, be uh, let's be a leader that can be held accountable regardless of the situation or whatever happens. Also, time management. You have to efficiently manage tasks and prioritize activities to optimize farm operations and productivity. Mm-hmm. So you have two staffs in your farm, and you have like four or five pens to feed. You know, um, we mentioned planning the other time. When there's planning, you'll be able to manage your time and say, you feed this, you feed this, you pick this, you do that. You'll be able to effectively manage tasks, right? So let um, in a farm, we should let there be time management. As a leader, you have to cultivate those skills. Another skill for... um. And that key leadership and team management skills. I'm sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm talking very low. Um, I explained earlier that I'm, I'm sort of weak a bit. But I believe you all can hear me, please. So we are with you, ma'am. We can hear you. We can hear you. All right. Thank you very much. So the next point is customer focus, right? Um, Whatever happens in your business, you are the owner. So either you sell or you don't sell, you bear the cost. So that's so for you not to bear a negative cost, you have to be customer focused. Maintain a customer centric approach by understanding the needs of the consumer and providing high quality products and service. Now, see yourself as a customer hmm? and say, okay, if I am the one that wants to buy this thing, how will I like it? Right? If you are selling chicken, if it is the bird you are selling, ask yourself. If I am the customer, if I'm the one that wants to come and buy this bed, will I buy it in this dirty environment? If I cannot buy it in the dirty environment, then your environment, your poultry farm should not be dirty. Because you're already feeling what the customers will feel. You ask yourself, these eggs, the way I'm packaging this egg, if I am the customer, will I buy it? If you cannot, then you have to re-strategize. You have to 
take the approach like the customer so that you can understand their needs, understand what they want so that you can produce and provide what they want. And in return, you make money. So um, be customer focused, be so conscious of what the customers want. Be so conscious of what, regardless, even if you have a customer care self person in your farm, if you have a marketer, whatever you have, you are still the one that will feel, you have to bring yourself as the customer and say, feel how the customer will feel. Perceive how the customer will perceive. Think how the customer will think. Reason how the customer will reason and make a decision. Make a change. Be customer focused. Be customer centric. You know. Also, um, another point mm -hmm. says, ethic, ethics and integrity. So, as a leader, you know, as a leader in the poultry farm in the business, you have to have an integrity, right? You have to. You need to have integrity. Uphold ethical standards and integrity in all aspects of farm management. Build trust with team members. Build trust with team members, customers, and stakeholders. So you have to see your your um, you have to have integrity so that when you tell your farmer, when you tell your um team members, I'm going to do this thing, they would believe you that our uh, guy is going to actually do it. There are some boss, there are some leaders that when they say, uh, you guys, we are going to change this thing tomorrow. See the following year, they are not going to change that thing. So when next the man says. We'll do this thing. The staff does not even believe him. It is until you do it that I'll say, okay, he has done it, right? But we have to we have to be the leader that has ethics, that has integrity. So when you say I'll do this thing, they can trust you and say, oh no, or God will do it. Now you say we are going to buy this thing, or we are going to buy that thing, or we are going to do whatever. They can say, ah no, now or God don't talk, or God will do it. You know. Even your customers will, be, will trust you that way. When you say, okay, we deliver this thing at this time, they will know that this person does not fail. He has said they will deliver it, they will deliver it. Your staff will trust you, your customer will trust you. If they are investors in your business, they will trust you. Your stakeholders will trust you. Everybody around will trust you because of your integrity, right? Mm. Okay, I think that is, yeah. So basically, um, that is like basically all on leadership. That is all we can take. That is not all, but that is all we can take on leadership. I, you know, um, I just said before that this class, today's class is like a chit chat. I, we are just saying, we just wanted to let everybody know that knowing how to do all these things that we have learned so far is not enough. All right, being a good leader counts for something. We have learned now. Everybody here has learned one or two things. Now, the way we the way we make use of these things on our farm will reflect if we have truly learned. Now, one of the ways where this can reflect if you have truly learned is this thing you are learning. Are you even passing the knowledge to your staffs? You are getting yourself up to date. Your team members should also be up to date. You know, you have to, um, so that when they are up to date, they will even be able to do your job well. They will be able to work well in your farm. They'll be able to um, do the job very well. So um, basically that is all on leadership and team management skills. And official leader will be all for this batch of the digital and climate smart farm management training. Who is happy? <laughs> Who is excited? Abi, we are Abi, we are not happy that the class is ending. Yeah, thank you for that clap. Uh, so some people joined while the, the presentation was going on, but I was asking. So if you can hear me, um I was asking how has the class been? Today is the last class, so I want to know your view. Um, what have you learned? What have you unlearned? What have you relearned? Um, how do you think we can do better in this training? Because we'll be having other batches. How do you think we can do better? What do you have to say generally? So you can, if you know you just joined while the presentation is on, I'm Aisha Bala, David, Mr. Emmanuel Okun, Mr. Olufemi, Vivo 2015. So you guys can unmute your mic, please, and 
Let's have a chit chat. Who's talking? Nobody's talking to me. Good evening. Good evening, sir. It's okay. Uh, my name is Emmanuel, and um, for the class and the uh, the whole learning experience, is yes, um, it's been an eye opener for me. Uh, like mm -hmm. I said yesterday, there are so many, so many things I thought I knew that I just realized I don't know any, mm -hmm. and then um, because. In the whole aspect of it, you know, um, the farm management, the time management, um, the customer uh, care, uh, marketing, and um, today now is about leadership. It's 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 um it's an all encompassing ex experience, and um, ironically, like everything in life, there has to be an end. Um, I just know that with what I have learned, um, I'm not going to let it be. I'm not just not going to let it lie only with me or, um, um, because right now, what we are doing, I, like I said, our farm is just, we are just starting. What I do, most of the, most of the videos, when it comes, I say, I give it to my wife and we discuss it. After she finished watching the video, we discuss it. And um, where there was a point that I missed, I she bring it up and we talk about it. So for me, it's been a very wonderful experience. And um, I want to use this opportunity to ask if um, we will we'll be able to uh, going forward, we will be able to contact Betsac and discuss discuss um, some issues. If we have any, if there is any challenge. Hello, are you hearing me? Yes, I can. Hear yes, you. we can hear. We can. Okay. The, those of us, the participants in the classes. I mean, if we, going forward, if we have issues on our farms, in our finances, and all that, if we can uh, have a, maybe a phone number or whatever, we can have a, a kind of contact person who could be like, I mean, uh, talking to and then maybe share our experiences. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Emmanuel. So basically, the Telegram channel is not going to be closed, right? It's going to be open and active all the time. And um, you can send me a DM. You can send a DM there. You can drop your uh, many questions you have on that channel, and you'll be sure to get an answer. So basically, that channel is going to is going to be um, have a lot of engagements. We are not stopping. Um, I believe new batches that join will still be on that channel. So you have access to us any day, any time, any minute. Do you get that? Yes, pa. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for that, man. You are welcome, sir. All right. So um, Wells has anything to tell me? So uh, yeah, for those people that are just for those that are just joined the class, um, I explained earlier that so your certificate for this training will be the certificate for this training will be made available by next week. So it will come in a link, right? Um, the link will be sent to the link will be sent to the group to the Telegram channel, and everyone can click on the link, look for your name, and download your certificate. Okay. So, but before then, um. A link will be sent today. So the oh, it will just take you like one minute or two minutes to fill that. It's just basic information can fill and yeah. 
Have you everybody got that? Your certificate will be ready by next week. You get it by next week. I believe we should be certified for this training. Oh, do we think we don't need the certificate? We will appreciate it, Mike. It's very important. Yeah. So, to be ready by next week, um, by God's grace. Um, any question, contribution, suggestion? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you, please. Hello. Hello, we can hear yeah. you. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Okay. Yeah, good evening. My name is David um, from Calabar. Okay. Welcome. Okay. Um, I must say that um, this training came at the right time because I just started uh, my poultry farm and mm -hmm. I've really learned a lot and it's very insightful. And during the class with um, Dr. Sambo, though I missed the class, but I watched the video and one of the things he talked about was feeding. And um, being new in the business, I uh, used to contact my supplier, my feed supplier. He always advised me to always feed my birds at all times, at night and in the daytime and every time. So, but watching the video, I heard Dr. Sambo said that we could administer feed from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. So please, I would want you to uh, draw more light on that because the feeding stuff is really uh, money consuming. Yes. Yeah, so, um... According to Dr. Sambu, we made mention that you can um, admit your feed. So basically, right, if you look at feeding the birds like 24 hours from morning to night, night to morning, it's actually like the feed wastes more. Right? The feed wastes actually more. But now if you feed them from, say, in the morning to evening, I'm definitely sure they cannot finish that feed. Now you can give them little in the night, probably to last them for the morning. They are going to sleep too, definitely. But then um, at this point with the rate of the economy, you know, we spoke about financial cost. We spoke about um, cutting costs and still keeping quality. So 24 hours feeding, Mr. Dr. Sambo is an expert in the field and he administered from 11 to 4. Now, you can feed them in the morning. Your If your feed, um, your feed miller says feed them every time. I'm just saying now, it's a feed miller. He wants to sell his feed. I am not saying that is why I say feed them every time. It's probably a professional one. But then at the same time, you can administer the feed and say, okay, from this time to this time, they'll get the feed. Before you feed them the next one, they most likely have not finished the ones they are, they are eating before, right? So instead of wasting feed every time, instead of wasting feed and just feeding them back to back, you can like have a time frame of when you want to feed. I believe that helps. Yeah, thank you. Right, you're welcome. Uh, sorry, my please, can I also chip in something yes, as you got feeding? All right now, if you have if you want to feed your birds, it is actually advised that the first three weeks from your day one to when they are three weeks, you are actually don't deny them access to food and water. Because this being that this is the time they are able to harness every detail in that food to convert it to meat. Now, it depends on how long the duration you want to keep your birds. If your target is six and seven weeks, now when you feed them well at day old to three weeks, you will get a good result that can actually sustain them for the next two, three weeks when you'll be preparing to dispose them. Now, anything after three weeks, now, the rate at which they will generate energy from three weeks to six weeks will be different from the way they have been generating energy. And if you discover that in the afternoon, especially when the weather is hot, 
the rate at which they were panting, gasping for air. I personally have experienced that at that time, if your beds are still exposed to feed, you know, they cannot control themselves. They see food, they want to eat. And this food, once it is being metabol uh, metabolized in their body, it is generating it. Their body gets hot, they cannot control it. And as a result, you just discover a bed that is healthy in the morning. You see it just lying down helplessly, dead in the afternoon. So when I complained, I actually learned that beds also have cardiac arrest due to excess heat in their body. So that is why it is advisable that once their birds are three weeks old, you feed them with what you know that they can finish between that say 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. in the morning. Then you withdraw food from them, let them have access to water. Believe you me, what they have eaten between that 7 a.m. and 11, they cannot finish digesting it. They continue to drink water till anything past two or three in the afternoon. Then you can continue to administer food to them. You give them what is sufficient for the night till the following morning. I think with that, you will have good results and you also be able to manage your food. Because if you give your bed one bag of feed per day, they will eat it. Sure, but they will not all utilize all the details in the food for you at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Well, Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, so um does anybody have any other question please if you have a question please you can unmute and ask please questions this is our final class so please feel free to ask questions though you can still always ask your questions every other question you have i see always ask it on the channel and yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Can you? Good evening. Good evening. Can you? Okay, please check check the comment section. There are questions there. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please, I'm checking them now. Okay. Okay, okay please. I'll be glad if we can have a session on black fly farming, be it pay training. It's training came handy for me. Okay, so we'll see what we can do about that and whatever we come up with will be communicated. Um we'll have come Genesis. We'll see what we can do about BSF and we'll let everybody know what we have come up with. How many times is it ideal to feed your to feed by day? Okay, Mr. Dad already answered that three times. Thank you. All right, so I think that's all on the chat box. Who else has any question for us, please? Before we call it a day and a day finally for this batch. Okay, good, good evening, ma. Good evening, sir. Um, I want to say thank you very much for the session. It has been very impactful. Um, my question uh is in the area of teamwork. Okay. So my question is that. Uh, I wanted to shed more light on corrective action in terms of discipline. Maybe in the case of insubordination or there is someone that is going contrary with the goal and the focus of the organization. Mm -hmm. What measures can be put in place to, to, to get the person in line and to address the situation? Um, because uh, the reason why I'm asking this is I think most farm manager or most farmers, what the what the usual resolve to is maybe payment deduction and all of that extreme measures. Is there a more subtle approach to corrective actions and punishment? So that's my question. I don't know if you understand. Yeah, I understand it, sir. Thank you for that question. So here is what I feel, right? Um, before anyone, before anyone take a job in your farm or any business, before anyone take a job, they should have the farm should have a rules and regulation that guide every staff. Now, can be okay. You have to resume by this time. 
you don't do this, you don't do that. Now, the, the staff should sign that, okay, so that is why there's always an employment letter, right? There's always an employment letter, regardless of how small, how big the um, job is, so that when the staff have signed that, I am not going to do this thing. I have agreed to the company's rules and regulation. There will not be a problem. So if you go against the rule, whatever measure the office now want to take, they can take it, right? But you see, um, the measure of deducting salary to doing this, I really do not, I really do not um flow with that, right? I believe in warnings and strikes. So um you have gone against the rule, right? You can give them a warning. Okay, this is your last warning. I'll give them a query. And if they are still adamant on doing that, if they still continue that behavior. You can relieve them of the job, all right? But that is after you have they have been warned, so that it will be fair on you, fair on them that okay, you have been warned, right? But now you don't want to change, so you can please just go, right? So I think that works. So basically, what I try to say is, let there be an agreement at the start of the job. Let the staff sign an agreement that, okay, this is what we want. And let them agree that, okay, I want this too. I believe that is quite clear. I believe that is quite clear, please. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. Um, Ulakon Genesis, can we raise bed without using antibiotics? Ah, Mr. Dada, thank you for like taking these questions. Thank you for answering them. Thank you. So this is basically what we'll be doing more in the channel, right? If one of us have a question and you can answer it, please, let's interact more now. Let's converse, let's communicate. We're not a family, we're not a community, right? So let's work as one. So um I don't know if there are more questions. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. Yeah. My question is it should we be expecting a training like this in the future? Something like this in the future. Most likely. It might not be this it might not be this uh, topic, it might be a different topic on uh, poultry farming too. Should we be expecting it? Well, most likely, yes, you should, but I cannot say for now, right? I cannot say for now, okay. but definitely. Whether pay, whether pay the oil is on paid, so we should be expecting something like this. Yeah, definitely. We are working towards a lot of things, and I believe this training is one of what we are working on. So just every information you need, every information that will be passed, you also be sent to the Telegram channel. OK, OK. Thank you very much, Ma. Yes, you're welcome, sir. So if there are no more questions, I think we can call it a day and finally a day. And I think I'll wrap up here. And... Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, please, it's like when Mr. Dada saw that question, then I have not joined the meeting. Can he repeat or maybe say something about it? About raising bed without using antibiotics. Okay, so the answer is in the chat box already, right? Says so as long as okay. yes, in the chat box, please. So yeah. um as regards um, the um, BF training, I'm really, really interested. And I hope because I in that video I, I watched, I had it. I really got every bit of it, but I needed I needed I need a hands-on training because there was a team of students I led for a competition. Particularly, um, the idea was to sustain find a sustainable way of, you know, feeding animals um, without um, using anti uh, antibiotics, like to subsidize the cost of feeding feeds. So I uh, will talk about um, the this last part of it, but why would not as as, as a direct you know the grand finale was because we, we don't we don't have a sample like a concept a prototype for our idea so we got to semi final but we needed to present a sample for them to really see what exactly we're talking about so that actually helped the process so if this training or well, if, if even if need do that I come down to 
whatever the training will be uh, holding, it will really give me hands on training and even grow it and start a business attached to the poetry of the thing. Yeah, okay. So um I said that I already said that um for the BSF, we'll see what we can do, work on organizing a training on that and the information will be passed. As we speak now, we have not come up with anything on that. So I cannot promise you that this is when this will happen and that is when that will happen. But as soon as we come up with something, we we'll let you know. I think that answers it. Yes, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So guys, um, it's wonderful having you all in this class. It is such a beautiful experience and I'm glad you all are in this class. Thank you very much for, for joining this training. Thank you for being in this batch. Thank you for being an amazing student. It's so beautiful when, um, I was glad when Dr. Sambu was praising people that ah, people were in class and you're not even disturbing with mics, this and that. And I was feeling like, yeah, that's how I should be. So thank you very much for everything. It's an amazing journey. It has been an amazing ride. And I'm glad I'm part of this. You're welcome, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's been amazing. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So on this note, so um, yesterday's class, right, the link has not been sent to rewatch the video. Uh, I'll try and see. I'll send it over the weekend, though. Yeah, I'll send it over the weekend. So, but you then, stay blessed, stay happy. Let's put everything we have learned to use and see magic works on our farm. Yeah, so thank you guys. Thank you very much for joining this training at this time. Have a blessed evening, a wonderful weekend, and a great time with your farm. Thank you very much once again. Signing out now. Thank you, ma. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, ma. Thank you very much. Thank you. So our conversation continues in the in the um channel, right? I'm not stopping. Okay. All right. It's okay. Okay. Let me okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Mom.